resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'll be sharing my time with the member for Pitt Meadows uh, Maple Ridge. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to rise today at the second reading of Bill C-46, which deals with driving while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. In all of our ridings, impaired driving upends lives, devastates families, and ravages communities. While the rate of impaired driving has been on the decline since 1980s in most of Canada, it still is a cause for concern. For example, Saskatchewan has the highest per capita rate of any province with 575 incidents per 100,000 people in 2015. And that rate is more than double in the Yukon and Northern uh, Northwest Territories. And while the vast majority of impaired driving incidents in Canada involve alcohol, drug impaired driving has been on the rise since 2009. In 2015, Canadian police reported some 3,000 incidents of people driving while under the influence of drugs. Drug impaired driving has been on the rise since 2009. In 2015, there were more than 72,000 impaired driving incidents, including 3,000 drug-impaired driving incidents. In other words, drug-impaired driving is not a new phenomenon, and the measures in place in recent years have not stopped the problem from getting worse. While drug-impaired driving has been a criminal offense since 1925, frontline officials across the country have made repeated calls to treat it as a more serious criminal offense, to create accurate and reliable testing tools, and to improve public education about the dangers of driving while impaired. Our approach through this bill will just do the same. To begin with, Bill C-46 would amend the criminal code to provide police with the authority to use roadside drug screeners. In practice, this is how it would work. A police officer would conduct a traffic stop under his or her authority. The officer could form reasonable suspicion, which can be determined from several factors, including red eyes, the order of an impaired substance, or abnormal speech patterns. If there are reasonable grounds to suspect drugs in the body, at that point, the police officer would be authorized to demand an oral fluid sample or a standardized field sobriety test. These screeners would detect the presence of a drug in a driver's oral fluid. A positive result on the drug screener would give the officer reasonable grounds to believe that the driver is committing an impaired driving offense, at which point he can demand blood samples or call a drug recognition expert. There is a solid history of both the effectiveness of this test and of the jurisprudence in dealing with challenges to it. With the Bill C-46, police would be able to use an oral fluid drug screener that could detect THC, cocaine, and methamphetamine. Oh, that's a good, good word to speak. <laughs> Thanks, I don't even take it. <laughs> These devices would be approved by the Attorney General of Canada once they are evaluated and recommended by the Canadian Society of Forensic Evidence. Six different poli Canadian police services from Halifax to Vancouver to Yellowknife tested these devices in a pilot project earlier this year to ensure that they work in a variety of conditions, including cold temperatures, and I look forward to the public report on that project that should be available soon. This bill, Mr. Speaker, would create three new criminal offenses so that people who have an illegal level of drugs in their blood or drugs in the combination with alcohol 
within two hours of driving could be charged. These offenses could be proven by blood samples, which can be taken by police when there are reasonable grounds to believe that a driver was impaired. Law enforcement officials have highlighted that existing impaired driving laws are complex and difficult to apply. For example, some offenses overlap and some cases take up a great deal of court time. Bill C-46 would repeal this current regime and replace it with a modernized, simplified, and coherent structure. Police across the country will be able to better understand, apply, and enforce the law, and therefore better able to keep communities safe. Bill C-46 would also facilitate detection of impaired drivers by allowing for random roadside breathing testing. This is something that already exists in countries like Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland, and groups like MAD, Canada, have been calling for it for a long time because of research showing that it results in fewer accidents and saves lives. Ultimately, Bill C-46 would institute an enhanced legislation framework to detect, prevent, and punish impaired driving. As I had said earlier, through a legislative approach, this must be accomplished by public education and efforts to combat the persistent misinformation that exists amongst Canadians on this issue. I'm encouraged that the Public Safety Canada has launched and promoted social media campaigns this year targeting youth, parents, and drivers with a message encouraging sober driving and amplifying the message of our partners. The March campaign garnered 11.5 million impressions, or the number of times the content was displayed, and over 75,000 engagements, such as likes, comments, and shares, meaning it reached a large audience. I understand that a comprehensive marketing strategy is also under development, including a sustained public education and awareness campaign to combat drug-impaired driving in collaboration with various partners. This campaign should help address some of the misperception that exists about the effects of certain substance on a person's ability to drive. Mr. Speaker, the changes that we are proposing now will mean that the government will be providing law enforcement agencies with clearer laws, better technology, better training, and more resources to investigate and prosecute drug-impaired driving. It means tougher penalties to deal appropriately with offenders, and it means better public education and awareness about the dangers of driving while impaired. As a result, Canadians will have safer roadways and safer communities. I'm encouraged at the response to these proposed measures thus far, including from Mothers Against Drunk Drivings and others. And that is why I urge all members to support this important legislation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my Honourable Colleague for her comments and um, she brought forward uh, a very serious and depressing statistic about my own province and that of course is that it has the highest rate of police reported impaired driving so I am pleased uh, that uh, the NDP will be supporting this bill but I just wanted to ask her uh, comments on, on two things that uh, that I would like to see more uh, at the committee stage looked into and one is that I know in Saskatchewan the police uh, the, the Saskatchewan government has been asking the federal government for more funding uh, so that they will be better prepared better trained uh, to be able to recognize people when they are under the influence of cannabis and they've been asking more funding uh, from the federal government and training and then the other issue in my community 
that uh, people have brought forward, and we are working on that. And, and that is that per previous to, that, to this, um, police had to have a reasonable suspicion to um, stop someone. With the new bill, that has that sort of threshold has been reduced. And I know some in my community are concerned that those uh, visible, those folks, um, uh, visible minorities, may be targeted by the police. So I just wanted to hear what her comments were on those two points. Thank you. Member for Don Valley East. Um, I thank the honourable member for her concerns, and and I agree with her that there may be a, a perception that the police might just pick on some visible minorities, but that's not the intent of the bill. The bill intends to ensure that all of us are safe, that people who have consumed alcohol and consumed drugs do not take to the roads. And the police have been given the powers to basically stop, when they stop a person uh, for a driving infraction, they have the right to tell the person why they're stopping them and basically take a test. They can do a reasonable amount of search in terms of seeing the eyes or seeing if there's order. But the police also can call in a drug enforcement uh, uh, person to take a look at it. And therefore, there are checks and balances in the system. And the second thing we also need to do is we need to work with provinces and territories and municipalities for better public education. And I'm so glad to see that the Minister for Public Safety has started that consultation and broad um, expansion of the, uh, of the communication. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And if I, if I may just follow up on, on the question uh, answered by my colleague, um, I would just point out to, 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 my, to my colleague uh, that Bill C-46 at, at Section 320, Sub 27, 2, requires that a, a police officer, if they're in possession of an approved screening device, in the course of a lawful exercise of powers under an Act of Parliament or an Act of Provincial Legislature, or arising from common law, then they may make, make a demand for a test. The, the stop itself must be lawful. And, and, and I would offer that suggestion to my, my friend, Mr. Speaker, through you, that if the stop is required to be lawful, and if the stop was otherwise rendered unlawful, and for example, the reason for the stop was something inappropriate, such as discrimination on the basis of race or ethnicity, the stop would be rendered unlawful, the test and its results would be inadmissible under the Constitution. And I, and I, I ask my member if, if, if she would find that provision, which is, which is new, reasonable reassurance uh, of, of the concerns that have been expressed. Member for Don Valley East. Thank my honourable colleague, he being an ex-police, a chief of police, I am so glad that he has uh, pointed to that section of the Act. And I think that would be very, very useful to prevent this misunderstanding that police are just targeting um, any person illegally. And I understand that six different uh, Canadian police services, uh, from Halifax to Vancouver to Yellowknife, have tested the device, so they should be, and they are very happy with the way this device is. Uh, and I uh, believe that the um, the section that you have mentioned, uh, that my honourable co colleague has mentioned, will be uh, a boon to the uh, prevention of uh, illegal stops. 